Hi, boys and girls, and men and women, and dogs. Because this book today, for story time, is called <gasps> Mr. Dog. Hey, all you dog lovers out there. We love dogs. Mr. Dog by Margaret Wise Brown, illustrated by Garth Williams. Not Garth Brooks. That would have been cool. Mr. Dog, the dog who belonged to himself. Once upon a time, there was a funny dog named Crispin's Crispian. He was named Crispin's Crispian because, there he is sleeping in his bed, he belonged to himself. In the mornings, he woke himself up and he went to the icebox and gave himself some bread and milk. He was a funny old dog. He liked strawberries. I don't think that's funny at all. But here he is in his robe during his coronavirus quarantine, having milk and bread and strawberries. Then he took himself for a walk and he went wherever he wanted to go. I find it interesting that on the page before he had a robe on and now he's not wearing anything. Side note. But one morning he didn't know where he wanted to go. Just walk and sooner or later you'll get somewhere, he said to himself. <laughs> Soon he came to a country where there were lots of dogs. They barked at him and he barked back and then they all played together. Yeah, all the puppies played together. But he still wanted to go somewhere. So he walked on until he came to a country where there were lots of cats and rabbits. The cats and rabbits jumped in the air and ran so Crispian jumped in the air and ran after them. Yay! That's exciting, huh? He didn't catch them because he ran into a little boy. Who are you and who do you belong to? asked the little boy. I am Crispin's Crispian and I belong to myself, said Crispian. Who and what are you? I am a boy, said the boy, and I belong to myself. I'm so glad, said Crispin's Crispian. Come and live with me. Yay, clap, clap. <laughs> then they went to a butcher shop to get his poor dog a bone, Crispian said. Now, since Crispin's Crispian belonged to himself, he gave himself the bone and trotted home with it. And the boy's little boy bought a big lamb chop and a bright green vegetable and trotted home with Crispin's Crispian. And he's smoking a pipe, which I don't recommend. Crispin's Crispian lived in a two-story doghouse in a garden. And in his two-story doghouse, he had a little fur living room with a warm fire that crackled all winter and went out in the summer otherwise known to Oregonians as a tiny house. His house was always warm. His house had a chimney for the smoke to go out. And upstairs, there was a little bedroom with a bed in it and a place for his leash and a pillow under which he hid his bones. Why does he need a leash if he owns himself? And there was plenty of room in his house for the boy to live there with him. But no cats allowed. There's his tiny house. Probably cost about two grand a month in Portland. Crispian had a little kitchen upstairs in his two-story doghouse where he fixed himself a good dinner three times a day because he liked to eat. That sounds like my diet. He liked steaks and chops and roast beef and chopped meat and raw eggs. That does not sound like my diet. This evening he made a bone soup with lots of meat in it. He gave some to the boy and the boy liked it. The boy didn't give Crispian his chop bone but he put some of his bright green vegetable in the soup. Yay! Oh, excuse you. And what did Crispian do with his dinner? Did he put it in his stomach? Yes, indeed. He chewed it up and swallowed it into his little fat stomach. This book was written a long time ago. And what did the little boy do with his dinner? Did he put it in his stomach? Yes, indeed. He chewed it all up and swallowed it into his little fat stomach. Crispin's Crispian was a conservative. 
<laughs> he likes everything at the right time. Dinner at dinner time, lunch at lunchtime, breakfast in time for breakfast, sunrise at sunrise, and sunset at sunset, and at bedtime. At bedtime, he liked everything in its own place. The cup and the saucer, the chair under the table, the stars in the heavens, the moon in the sky, and himself in his own little bed. I like that too. Here he is sweeping up his tiny house. And then what did he do? Then he curled in a warm little heap and went to sleep and he dreamed his own dreams. That was what the dog who belonged to himself did. And what did the boy who belonged to himself do? Well, the boy who belonged to himself curled in a warm little heap and went to sleep and he dreamed his own dreams. That was what the boy who belonged to himself did. There they are, sleeping. <sighs> Good night and sweet dreams. There's the tiny house with the boy and Mr. Dog. The end. We hope you enjoyed story time today. This is Kalia <clears throat> and Amaris signing off. Bye. Say bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. <clears throat> hey, director, can you yell cut and hit the.